Hello viewers, today we are going to study about infarction. We will be studying the definition, the causes of infarction, the types of infarction, morphology of infarct and various factors influencing the development of infarct. Now what is an infarct? Infarct is an area of ischemic necrosis caused by occlusion of either the arterial supply or the venous drainage. Now what is ischemia? We know that ischemia is an important cause of cell injury. So ischemia is deficient supply of blood, deficient supply of blood to tissue or a part of tissue relative to its metabolic need or demand now what can be the effect of ischemia ischemia leads to hypoxia there is inadequate supply of nutrients and there is accumulation of metabolic waste products metabolic waste products now what what can be the outcome of ischemia it depends on various factors like the um, anatomy of blood supply whether the tissue is supplied by end artery or it has dual blood supply or the tissue is rich in collaterals we will be discussing in detail about this later on the uh, vulnerability of the tissue to ischemia and also it depends upon the rate of development of ischemia or rate of occlusion if it is occurring fast or it is occurring slow now depending on these factors ischemia may have no effect on the tissue or there can be functional derangements or it can lead to infarction infarction which is ischemic necrosis infarction in infarction there is death of tissues there is ischemic necrosis and if uh, there is myocardial infarction, cerebral infarction. Sometimes there can be death also, sudden death. So these are important examples of infarction, myocardial infarction, cerebral infarction, pulmonary infarction, bowel infarction, ischemic necrosis of extremities which is called as gangrene which is an uh, important complication which is a serious complication in diabetics and infarction is an important cause of clinical illness now what are the causes of infarction arterial thrombosis or embolism it is a major cause it is seen in 99 percent of tissue infarction it is a major cause of tissue infarction the lesser common causes are expansion of atheromatous plaque if there is hemorrhage in the atheromatous plaque it leads to expansion of the plaque and leads to uh, obstruction to the blood flow local vasospasm external compression of the vessel for example tumor it is compressing the vessel from outside which, which which leads to occlusion of the vessel torsion of vessels seen in torsion testis bowel infarction it is volvulus Now traumatic rupture of vessels, strong sangulated hernia in which there is entrapment of vessels. Now we understand that if there is arterial occlusion, it will lead to 
the uh, infarction of the tissue which is supplied by that artery now if there is venous obstruction suppose there is uh, venous thrombosis then what will happen the inflow of oxygenated blood will not occur now if uh, there are some outflow channels suppose there are some outflow channels here then and these open then the outflow can be maintained and uh, the inflow of oxygenated blood can occur and the tissue perfusion will not suffer so uh, the what happens in torsion test is there is single efferent vein now if it gets uh, obstructed what will happen it will lead to infarction of the tissue which it is draining so the uh, tissues which are which have single efferent vein are prone to infarction similarly the tissue which have end arterial circulation end arterial circulation means that portion of the tissue is supplied by only that artery uh, there is no anastomosis with other artery so if that artery is obstructed then it will lead to infarction of that uh, area or the tissue that is supplied by that artery now how do we classify infarction on the basis of color which indicates the amount of hemorrhage the infarct can be classified as red or hemorrhagic infarct and white or anemic infarct depending on the age of the infarct it can be fresh or recent it can be old or healed and depending on the presence or absence of infection the infarct can be septic or bland infarct red infarcts red infarcts or hemorrhagic infarcts they are seen in venous occlusions for example testicular torsion red infarcts occur in loose spongy tissue for example lung where the sponginess of the tissue allow the seepage of the blood to collect in the infarcted zone the tissues which have dual circulation for example lung small intestine where blood can flow from the unobstructed supply to the site of necrosis the tissues which are previously congested because of sluggish uh, venous outflow in these tissues red infarct occurs where the flow is re-established to a site of arterial occlusion and necrosis for example following angioplasty now what about white infarcts or anemic infarcts these are seen with arterial occlusions these are seen in solid compact organs with end arterial circulation for example kidney spleen heart so the white infarcts occur in solid compact organs where the uh, the tissue density it limits the seepage of blood uh, into the infarcted zone uh, from the adjoining capillary beds now what is the morphology of infarct the infarcts tend to be wedge shaped wedge is triangular triangular it is a three dimensional shape these are wedge shaped like this the apex is formed by the occluded vessel and the base is formed by the periphery of the organ and the margins of the wedge are irregular these are irregular and these are uh, uh, not well defined these reflect the vascularity of the tissue from the adjoining vessels now the fresh infarcts they are poorly defined and hemorrhagic with time after a few days the margins become better defined this is because of a rim of congestion why this congestion occurs it occurs due to inflammation it occurs due to inflammation now with time the infarcts become progressively paler and more sharply defined now which one will be sharply defined 
वाइट इन्फार्क्ट और हेमरेजिक इन्फार्क्ट द वाइट इन्फार्क्ट विल बिकम मोर पेलर एंड मोर शार्पली डिफाइंड बिकॉज देर इज लिमिटेड अमाउंट ऑफ हेमरेज हेयर द एक्स्ट्रावेजेटेड आर बी सीज दे गेट लाइज एंड दीज बिकम पेल एंड बेटर डिफाइंड विद टाइम बट इन केस ऑफ रेड इन्फार्क्ट देर इज एक्सटेंसिव हेमरेज विच इज अकरिंग इन लूज स्पॉन्जी टिश्यू सो दे रिमेन रेड एंड लेटर ऑन दे बिकम ब्राउनिश एंड देर इज हीमोसिड्रिन रिच रेजिडम दे बिकम फॉर्म ब्राउनिश विद हीमोसिड्रिन रिच रेजिडम नाउ वट डू वी सी ऑन माइक्रोस्कोपी इन एरिया ऑफ इनफैक्ट द हिस्टोलॉजिकल एग्जामिनेशन शोज ischemic coagulative necrosis in which the tissue architecture is preserved and the nuclear details are lost and it takes 4 to 12 hours for the uh, dead tissue to show histological evidence of necrosis what does it mean it means that uh, if there is a uh, death so, uh, shortly after vascular occlusion then the histological features of infarction will not be evident so if there is sudden death shortly after vascular occlusion no evidence of infarction will be seen the inflammatory response begins at the periphery within a few hours and it becomes evident within 1 to 2 days it becomes evident and this inflammatory response Uh, occurs in response to the dead cells the neutrophils and later the macrophages they phagocytose the dead cells then healing occurs it starts at the margins of the infarct and if there is a presence of tissue stem cells then regeneration occurs and ultimately the infarct tissue it is replaced by scar tissue replaced by a fibrous scar now what is happening in if there is ischemic injury in brain there will be liquefactive necrosis instead of coagulative necrosis liquefactive necrosis is seen now let us see what are the various factors that influence the development of infarct factors influencing the development of infarct anatomy of the vascular supply whether there is availability of alternative blood supply or not alternative blood supply protects uh, the tissue from infarction so in lungs liver hand and forearm there is dual blood supply lungs are supplied by pulmonary artery and bronchial artery liver hepatic artery and portal vein circulation and the hand and forearm by ulnar and radial artery in contrast the renal and splenic circulation are end arterial circulation so if the artery gets obstructed then there is no other alternative blood supply and this leads to infarction the second is rate of occlusion now slowly developing occlusion the infarction is less likely because it gives a chance for the uh, collateral blood supply to open up suppose there is slowly occurring occlusion here and this is 
the collateral circulation the functional flow is very less if it is uh, uh, this is patent the functional flow through this collateral is less but if it is slowly getting obstructed then this collateral circulation opens up and the blood will flow from here and it will supply this tissue the area of the tissue so if it is rapidly occurring then the time for collateral circulation uh, is not provided and the tissue will get infected so rate of occlusion is important tissue vulnerability to ischemia so the neurons if they are deprived of blood supply they will die within 3 to 4 minutes myocardium undergo irreversible ischemic injury uh, within 20 to 30 minutes the fibroblasts they may survive they remain viable even after a uh, few hours of ischemic injury fourth is hypoxemia abnormally low oxygen content it predisposes to uh, infarction if there is obstruction to the blood flow then infarction is more likely to occur for example anemic patients or cyanotic patients if there is obstruction then uh, the chances are that infarction will occur rapidly and it will be extensive now let us see uh, some gross and micro photographs of infarct tissue these are the gross images of red and white infarcts image a shows hemorrhagic roughly wedge shaped pulmonary red infarct the lung tissue is loose and spongy and has dual blood supply this favors the formation of red infarct now image b it shows sharply demarcated white infarct in spleen. The splenic tissue is compact, solid and has an arterial circulation. Thus, white infarct is seen. This is gross image which shows hemorrhagic infarction of intestine. This is the red hemorrhagic non-viable part of intestine and it is roughly demarcated from the surrounding apparently viable part of the intestine. This is gross image of infarct spleen. This is a wedge shaped white infarct which is sharply demarcated and it is well defined from the surrounding viable splenic tissue. This is the micro photograph which shows inflammatory response at the margins of the infarct. The infarct tissue has a preserved architecture but other details are lost as compared to the surrounding viable splenic tissue. This is remote or old kidney infarct. This is the kidney infarct, which is replaced by a large fibrotic scar. This is the scar. Uh, you can see it is depressed as compared to the surrounding renal tissue. Uh, this is the micro photograph showing renal infarct. This is normal kidney. Here the difference you can see that the renal architecture is preserved we can see the glomeruli we can see the tubules but there is loss of nuclei and the cytoplasm is intensely eosinophilic but the basic outline of the architecture of glomeruli and tubules is preserved these are the two uh, micro photographs showing myocardial infarction this is the inflammatory response in myocardial infarction and here we can see this is the scar tissue the necrosed myocardial fibers are replaced by dense collagenous scar so this was all about infarction i hope you like the video for more such videos please subscribe my channel and do not forget to like and share my videos thanks for watching